Now let us look at the terminology related to the cost and quantities. We have lump sum contract. This is basically a fixed price contract which is not subjected to remeasurements or recalculations except for the provisional quantities and the variations. The meaning of this lump sum here is that the contract has a fixed price as recognized by both the contractor and the employer. Upon completion of this project, this will be the price to be paid to the contractor. This is regardless whatever happens within the project, disregard the implications of this fluctuating cost for the materials. And once the lump sum contract is formed, it will be fully dependent on the contractor to ensure the efficiency of the operations. If the contractor can make the operations to be highly efficient, that he managed to cut down the cost of the constructions without compromising the quality of the work, the contractor should theoretically be able to earn more. Let's say now the contractor is managing the project very poorly, that the cost of the constructions increased higher than the contract sum as agreed with the employer, the employer will still pay the lump sum as per what they have agreed by the time the contract is formed. So this sum is not subjected to change once it is agreed between the contractors and the employer. This is except with the provisional quantities and the variations. The variations means the changes in terms of the scope of the work, which is different from the original one, as assigned between the contractors and the employer, which normally happen during the commencement of the work, that the employer requested to change certain things probably in the form of additions, substitutions, or omissions of certain scope of work. This will result in variations in terms of the cost of the constructions, which was not originally anticipated during forming of the contract. As a result, the contract sum or total amount to be paid to the contractor it will be on basis of the lump sum plus the adjustment due to the variations. There is one more item that can affect the lump sum, which is the provisional quantities. The provisional quantities, or we call it provisional, is the estimated quantities of the work provided in the contract bill. The reason of estimating the quantities, it is because it cannot be determined or detailed at the time of forming the contract. That means this provisional quantity is related to the component of the work which the exact quantity is unknown at the time of tendering. What is known at that moment is the task or the nature of the work. We know that it's going to be this particular kinds of work, but due to some unforeseen circumstances, the quantities is unable to be known. For example, the piling works. Although we have soil investigations report for certain projects, the estimated ground conditions or the driving length of the piles is still not confirmed yet because nobody knows what's actually happening under the ground. The final quantities will only be determined after the piling works where all the piles are dry to set. And these final quantities may be different from what you have estimated during tendering. With that, this can be categorized under the provisional quantities. Now, because you 
are unable to determine the quantity this is going to affect the cost that you're going to bid for the project you have most of the information except for the quantity therefore the payment for the work it will be on the basis of the actual work being carried out at a certain rate as agreed in the contract the more quantities being used the higher the cost and the calculations it will be the regs multiply the quantities similar to the variations the cost on the item related to the provisional quantities is uncertain in nature therefore this should not affect the lump sum contract whichever the quantities are confirmed based on the price that you have quoted everything sum up and that will be the lump sum and this is not subjected to remeasurements or recalculations next we look at the prime cost sum this will be the sum provided in the contract for the work or services to be executed by the nominated subcontractor or the materials and goods to be supplied by the nominated supplier this prime cost sum can be calculated we know the work we know the materials required we also know the quantity and it is related to the nominated subcontractor and the nominated supplier these two parties are working under the contractor and therefore the contractor will need to estimate the cost to be considered in the project next it will be the provisional sum this is referring to the sum provided in the contract and or the nominated subcontractor this provisional sum will cover the work to be executed as well as the supply of any materials and goods as implied by the term of provisional that means this amount of money is unforeseen at the stage of tendering therefore it is pure estimations what you see here, you have provisional sum and provisional quantities. The term may look similar. By definitions, they are different. The provisional sum is related to the money, while the provisional quantity is related to the quantity. That means the amount of money is unknown at the stage of the tendering. We put it under the provisional sum and the amount of quantity which is unknown at the stage of tendering that will be under the provisional quantities both of them are provisional in the nature that means it is not clearly specified or not being able to be detailed when entering a contract another main difference between the provisional sum and the provisional quantity is that the provisional quantity we know that the work must have been carried out just that we do not know the quantity at that moment it is still predictable as long as we give a rate as agreed between the contractor and the employer the cost of the work related to the provisional quantity can still be quantified now when we talk about the provisional sum it is related to something where the information provided is incomplete or which at the moment that the contract is formed it is still unsure whether eventually it comes together with the project or it will be totally omitted for example for a construction project the employer has intentions to have a swimming pool however this idea still remains at the conceptual stage there is no technical drawing provided probably the size of the swimming pool has not been confirmed yet probably an estimated size has been mentioned without any clear details in terms of the specifications and requirement this can be put under the provisional sum or maybe this swimming pool at the end of the day 
will be omitted from this project. The employer, after the second thought during the constructions, decided not to have this swimming pool, then this will be removed. These are the differences between the provisional sum and the provisional quantities. Let's say now knowing that you have a swimming pool for this particular project, the contractor cannot fully omit this. As the employer will need to have an idea, the total cost of the project, including this swimming pool. Now the problem here is you do not have the sufficient information and details regarding this swimming pool. Then it will be based on the experience of the contractor, based on the estimated size as per given by the employer. The contractor will need to quote a price for this swimming pool, put it together under the contract. The contractor may choose to quote a more conservative price in order to avoid himself from making losses with this swimming pool, but he will need to be careful also if the price quoted is too expensive, this will increase the contract sum which eventually might affect his chances of getting the project. Therefore, the contractor will need to be careful in quoting the price. Next, we look at the terminologies related to the works and details. In the contract document, whenever the term works appear, it is referring to the work as described in the Articles of Agreement in accordance to the project and the works can be referred from the contract document. It also includes any change made on this word in accordance to the contract. Normally, this words is referring to the works to be done by the contractor and finally deliver the project back to the employer. As for the variations, it is basically change made to the work as defined in clause 11.1. .1. The work program, it will be the outline of the work as described in the contract document clause 3.5. And lastly, the as built drawings. We have technical drawings which normally appear at the planning stage showing how the building or structures are intended to be constructed. Then the construction works commence. During the constructions, there could be some changes made due to some circumstances or considerations. And once the project is completed, the contractor will need to provide drawing showing the details what has already been built. And this drawing is known as the s -built drawing. It is possible that this s -built drawing is different from the original building plans as there were changes made during the construction. It is also possible that the work is perfect, done perfectly in accordance to the building plans. Then the s -built drawing it will be totally same as the building plan. Whichever it is, this s built drawing comes after the construction and it shows the final conditions of the building as per what is being built by the contractor. This s built drawing can be provided by the contractor and also provided by the nominated subcontractor. Nominated subcontractor will need to provide the s built drawing for the part of the work done by the NSC and the contractor will have to provide the s drawing for the entire project.